Hello my friends, I hope you're doing super wonderful and I welcome you to the first episode of making the best PowerPoint presentations even better series, where we'll do our best to improve the best PowerPoint slide designs in the world. Let's go! Alright my friends, so currently I am on GraphicRiver.net website, which is one of the biggest PowerPoint template marketplaces on the internet. And here we should definitely find some best-selling PowerPoint templates at the moment. So let's just go to all PowerPoint templates and let's make sure that we're looking at the best sellers, that's good. And as well let's make sure that we're looking at the templates added in the last year because we want to see some fresh templates. And as you can see here in the first place we have this one called 2022 Essentials Multipurpose Premium PowerPoint Template. That's a pretty long name but I guess this is pretty awesome template and as you can see I have already bought this template. And I have looked inside and I can tell you that's a really well made template with awesome animations. I really do love that all of the slides are animated. And now the question is can we take at least one slide from this awesome presentation and make it even better? So let's find it out. And by the way, this video was not sponsored by anyone, however, if you do choose to grab this template through the link in the video description, I may receive a small commission that helps to support this channel. Thank you so much. Okie dokie my friends, so I have decided to dive deep into the glass morphic slides provided in this template, and I think we could do our best, we can try our best to improve this slide. And I just want to say to the creators of this template that the slide is absolutely wonderful and this is just my subjective opinion what we could try to improve. So first of all let's look at the glass morphic effect on this slide and as you can see if we would try to resize this white uh, rounded rectangle or if we would try to move it to the side, as you can see this uh, glass morphic effect, this blurred part of the circle stays in place and the reason for that is that we have two separate shapes, we have this circle and we have this fuzzy part of the circle. And later on I'll show you a different approach that might be a little bit more flexible. And next I have noticed that this little beautiful arrow has its rotation center somewhere here in the middle. As you can see if I would try to rotate it, it would rotate like this. And I think it would be nice to create a new rotation center somewhere here at the bottom so that this arrow would rotate a little bit more realistically. So I'll show you how we can do that. And next I think we could convert this chart into an editable Excel chart where you could insert your own values and the chart would update automatically. Because currently this is just a simple shape that you have to adjust manually, so I think we could definitely improve that with an editable Excel chart. Alright my friends, so let's start with the glass morphic effect and let me show you a new approach that might be a little bit more flexible. And before that let's just duplicate the current slide so that we can see the original and the new slide as well. Okay, and on the duplicate slide, let me just uh, remove this fuzzy part of the circle. Okay, and let me resize this blue beautiful circle a little bit so that we can enjoy the glass morphic effect a little bit better. And let's make a copy of this bubble. Let's bring this copy to the right side and let's send it to back. And let me just change the fill colors so that we have some variety. And as you can see, this template comes with some beautiful colors in the color palette. So let's just use some of those purple shades to fill our second uh, bubble on the right side. That's beautiful. And here in the center of the slide, as you can see, we have this beautiful rounded rectangle. And what's special about this rectangle is that it's using the slide background fill as its fill. And as you can see currently, the slide background is filled with a light gray color. And this is the same color that the rounded rectangle has. So this uh, slide background fill concept is really important and we will use it to create the glass morphic effect. Alright my friends, you're doing wonderful and the next step is to hide everything on this slide. So let's just go to selection pane and let's just click on that button, hide all. Alright, now let's just scroll down to the bottom of the list and let's make sure that we unhide those two circles, that's good. And now let's make sure that we hide the website, the logo and the slide number as well and we can do that in the slide master view. Let's just make sure that we scroll to the top to this master layout and this is where this logo, the slide number and the footer is. So we can just go to the selection pane here as well. And let's make sure that we hide all of the elements here as well, okay? And now once we come back to the normal view, all we should see are those two beautiful bubbles. That's awesome. And now let's actually export this slide as a picture. You can hit F12 to do that. Okay, let's make sure that we choose a picture format. We can use PNG. And let's give it a name, for example, ovals, and click save. Okay, let's make sure that we are exporting just this one slide, alright. 
And now we have successfully exported this line as a picture, that's wonderful. Now we can actually delete these two circles and let's just unhide everything in the normal view and in the slide master view so that once again we can see everything, so that we can see all of the elements on the slide and that we can see the logo, the website and the slide number. Okay, so let's make sure that we're back in the normal view and let's check the slide layout that this slide is currently using. As you can see, the slide layout is called title slide number 6. Okay, let's remember that and now let's jump to the slide master view once again. So let's find that slide layout, title slide number 6, here it is and now let's just duplicate it, okay? We'll create a new slide layout, we can give it a new name, let's just right click it and choose rename, let's give it a new name, for example, new glass morphic slide. That's awesome. Okay, and now is the point where we have to use that slide that we have exported as a picture. So let's just find it, here it is. Let's click insert and here is our beautiful slide picture with those two beautiful circles, okay? And now let's just add a blur effect to these guys. So let's just go to picture format, let's go to artistic effects and let's choose the blur effect, okay? And for the radius, let's insert for example 70. Of course, you can experiment with whatever values that you wish. And I think 70 works pretty well and here it is, our beautiful blurred slide picture. Let's just move it a little bit downwards so that we can see the slide layout. And now let's just copy this image, let's just right click and choose copy, ok. And now let's just right click on the slide layout, ok. Let's go to format background options and now let's choose a new fill and instead of solid fill let's choose picture and let's choose clipboard. And this way we have basically pasted this blurred image to the slide background of the slide layout. That's super awesome. And now for this image we can actually reset it so that we can see those sharp circles once again. Just like that. Ok, so we have a blurred background and we have this sharp image on top. Let's just put it to the center and middle of the slide, just like that. And as you can see now the footer and the slide number is missing because you know we are covering that for this image but don't worry we can just jump to the master layout. Let's just copy all of these elements once again and let's just paste them additionally on top so that we can see everything that we want, the logo, the website and the slide number. That's awesome and now let's get back to the normal view. And once we're back in the normal view let's go to the layout menu and let's activate our newly created new glass morphic slide layout and let's see what happens. Skadoosh my friends and as you can see we have this beautiful glass morphic effect and as you remember we have set this blurred image as the slide background. And now this rounded rectangle is taking that image as its fill. And now we can go to shadow options, let's add an inside shadow to this rounded rectangle, let's choose a white color, let's add a blur of 50 points and this way we have made some frosty edges to this rounded rectangle to make this uh, glass morphic effect even more awesome. And the best part about this glass morphic effect approach is the flexibility. As you can see once we're moving this rounded rectangle, it always adapts and the glass morphic effect is always working. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. And of course if you'd like to move those circles in the background you would not be able to do that because now these guys are a picture, ok? This is just one big picture. So just keep that in mind but we would have no problems moving this rounded rectangle. Ok my friends, and next let's create a new rotation center for this beautiful arrow. As you can see now it's rotating like this. And let's make a new rotation center so that it would be somewhere at the bottom, ok? So that the rotation would be more realistic. And now let me just insert a new blank slide so this way it will be much easier to work with this little arrow. Let's activate the slide guide so that we can see the center of the slide. And let's paste that arrow right here, ok? And now let's just zoom in a little bit and let's rotate this arrow to the left side just like that, alright? And now let's position this arrow somewhere in the middle of the slide where we would like the new rotation center to be, ok? And once you're happy with the position of the arrow, let's just zoom out, right? And now let's just insert a circle. Let's just go to insert shapes, let's choose the circle tool or the oval tool, hold down the shift key to draw a perfect oval. And let's make sure that we align it to the middle and center of the slide, just like that. Let's remove the fill, ok, and now let's just select both of these guys, the arrow and the circle and let's group them into one beautiful group. And if we would try to rotate these guys, as you can see now, this arrow has a new rotation center and I think it looks much more realistic this way. And we can as well select the circle and hide the line as well, so that we can only see this little arrow, ok. And now we can turn off the slide guys, we won't need them anymore. And now we can just copy this beautiful arrow. 
Let's get back to this slide, let's delete the old arrow and let's paste in the new arrow with the new rotation center and now let's just align it to the chart, just like that. And now we can basically just rotate this arrow to any position that we wish, okay? Super duper awesome. And let me just jump quickly to the selection pane and let's rename our beautiful arrow. Currently it's named group 39, so let's name it arrow just like that. And now let's focus on this beautiful chart. So as you can see currently this is just a half donut shape that you can adjust manually by dragging on this yellow handle. And let's delete it and let's create an editable Excel chart. And for this gray part we can leave it the way it is, it will be a nice background for our chart, okay? So once again let's jump to this empty slide, let me just remove the arrow and now let's uh, insert a donut chart, okay? So let's go to insert. Let's go to charts, let's choose first of all pie chart category and here it is, the donut chart, okay? Let's click OK to insert it. Okay, so once we insert a donut chart, as you can see, we get four rows of data. And we need just two rows, so let's delete uh, row number five and row number four, okay? And now let me just call this column percent, because we'll be adding some, I know, percentage values. And for the first row, let's name it visible. And for the second one, let's call it invisible. And now for both of these cells, let's just insert 100%. Okay, so we'll have a visible part and we will have an invisible part. And once you move your mouse over the chart, you're getting those little pop-ups that tell you the current uh, chart series that you're looking at. And as you can see, this guy on the left side should be invisible. So let's just go to fill options and first of all let's just choose no lines because we need no lines. And once again let's make sure that we select this guy on the left side and let's choose no fill and make him invisible. Just like that. And now for this guy on the right side for the visible part we should rotate it so that it looks like a proper half donut chart. Okay. And let me just check the previous slide so that we can see how the chart looks like here. It looks like this. And to achieve the same look, we'll have to use this slider called angle of the first slice. So let's just move this slider to the right side. I think we could use 270 degrees to achieve the look that we want. That's super awesome. And of course, we'll have to adjust the width of the chart so that it matches the gray shape. But we'll do that a little bit later on. So now, as you can see, the visible part is 100% and the invisible part is 100% as well. So in total, we have 200%. And I think we can automate the invisible cell so that we don't have to type in the value each time. So we can just type in equals 200% uh, minus uh, B2 cell, which is the visible cell, okay? And as you can see, each time when we insert a new visible value, for example, 75%, the invisible part is calculated automatically and the chart updates automatically as well. So that's super awesome. Alright my friends, and now let me just clean up this chart a little bit, let's remove the chart title and the legend, and as well let's fill this visible part of the chart with a new beautiful linear gradient. Alright, so the chart is ready, let's just grab it and let's paste it into our previous slide, and now all we have to do is to match the size of this chart to the size of that uh, gray shape in the background, okay? Let's just make sure that we bring the arrow to the top of the selection pane list, just like that. And now let's just bring our chart to this gray shape. And you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to help you align these two shapes, okay? So just make sure that you align the outer edge of these two charts, because the inside edge uh, we will adjust that with the donut hole size uh, slider, okay? And now let's just drag the slider to the left side until we get the look that we want. Let's try using 55%. That's looking just wonderful. Congratulations, now we have this beautiful editable chart for this little arrow that has a new rotation center. That's awesome. And next I think we could have some fun with animations. We could animate this little arrow and we could animate the chart as well. And before that, let me just quickly update some of the text boxes around the chart. For example, this text box 70 should be 75, the midpoint between 50 and 100. Let's do the same on the left side. Alright my friends, now let's jump to animations and let's check out all of those animations that currently exist on this slide. And as I have mentioned before, I really like the fact that all of these slides on this template are nicely animated. So let's make sure that we select our beautiful chart and let's just choose a wipe animation. Let's choose direction from left. And as you can see, the animation has been added to the bottom of the animation list. That's awesome. Let's choose duration one second and let's make sure it starts after previous, after the rest of the animations. 
And now let's make sure that we select this little arrow and let's animate it as well. And before that, let's just rotate it to this starting position. That's good. And now let's just find the spin animation. Here it is. Let's click on it. Let's make sure it starts with previous, so together with the chart animation and for the duration let's use the same length, let's use 1 second. Ok, and now the question is how many degrees we should spin this arrow so that it stops at the 75% mark. So this whole distance is 180 degrees and we can just multiply it by 75, so let's just multiply 180 degrees by 0 0.75 and we get 135 degrees. So let's just insert this number here in this custom spin field, ok. And let's just use a maximum value for the smooth end to make this animation smooth. And let's just give it a preview. And now as you can see the chart is animated and the arrow is spinning at the same time. Super duper awesome. And what's awesome about this editable chart is that now you can input new values. For example, let's say you would like to input 97, so just right click, choose edit data. And for the visible cell, let's just insert 97 and as you can see the invisible cell is being calculated automatically, that's awesome. And now let's just calculate the correct degree for this uh, spin animation. So let's go to the spin animation options and once again let me just grab the calculator and let's just multiply 180 by 0 0.97 and we get something like this. So let's just type in 175 degrees into the custom spin field, ok. 175 and let's just click OK and now the chart and the spin animation should match ok let's give it a preview and everything is working just fine. Congratulations ladies and gentlemen so hopefully we have improved the slide and the slide as I have mentioned before was really good from the start but I hope so that with this new glass morphic approach with this uh, new editable chart and with this new arrow with the new rotation center we have managed to make this light at least a little bit better. So once again huge thanks to the creators of this template, you have done a wonderful job, link is in the video description if you'd like to check out this template. And I thank you for watching today's video, I hope you have enjoyed it and if you have please give it a like and subscribe so that you don't miss my future videos. Thank you for watching, stay happy, stay healthy and I'll see you on my next video. Peace.